Hi, today we are looking at section 8.5, which deals with trigonometric functions. So we're going to be looking at for graphs of sine, cos, and tan, as well as applying some transformations to them. Now, for any real number x, y equals sine x is the value of our sine ratio for an angle measuring x radians. So this is our graph of y is equal to sine of x. What you'll note is if we don't have any transformations, we will have an x-intercept at 0, 0. We usually refer to that as our starting point. It's going to go up to positive 1, down past our axis, and go back up to here. So we can see essentially we have one full cycle between here and here. So that's a distance of 2 pi. So we can say that this has a period of 2 pi. And you'll notice that every 2 pi it repeats itself. So that's our period. Now you'll also notice that it's going between positive 1 and negative 1. So that means it has an amplitude of one because our amplitude is our distance from the middle of the graph to the top or bottom of our graph. Now, if we look at this, we also have what are known as zeros. And they're at zero pi, two pi, three pi. So they are at multiples of pi. So at x is equal to k times pi, where k is any integer. Now, here's our graph of cos x. You'll see that it is very similar to our graph of sine x, except for where it starts is a bit different. So essentially, this graph looks like it's being shifted just slightly horizontally. You'll see that it starts at positive 1 instead of at 0. And then once it starts, it starts here, goes down, back up, and returns to its starting point in 2 pi. So we can also say this has a period of 2 pi. And it's repeating itself every 2 pi. You'll notice it also has that amplitude of 1. This one, though, doesn't have its zeros at multiples of pi. Instead, we've got pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. So they're still pi apart, but they're not multiples of pi. So instead, we'll say 0 set x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi times k, where once again, k is an integer. Now, both of these graphs, so y equals sine x, and y is equal to cos sine x are both referred to as sinusoidal functions. Tan x, on the other hand, is not referred to as sinusoidal. It has a completely different shape than these two graphs. So y equals tan x is the value of a tan ratio for an angle measuring x radians. So you'll see that our graph of tan x actually has a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes. It also doesn't have an amplitude because it continues forever upwards and forever downwards. But what you will notice is the distance between these asymptotes is pi. So therefore, this has a period of pi. So where are Cosine and sine graphs had a period of 2 pi. Tan has a period of pi. You'll notice it, just like sine, has zeros at x is equal to pi times k because, once again, it's at multiples of pi. And that is k is all real integers. Now, our asymptotes
are at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. So essentially where our coast graph had its zeros. So at x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi times k, where k is an integer. Okay, so next we will start looking at some transformations. So we'll start with vertical stretches, which affect what's known as our amplitude for sine and cosine. So determining the amplitude of a sinusoidal function. So a change in amplitude is a vertical stretch or compression by a factor of a, when we've got y equals a sine theta or y equals a cos theta. So determine the amplitude of each. So we've got y equals two thirds sine x and y equals negative four cos x. So our amplitude is just this number in front. So it's going to be two thirds. And then this will be four. We don't worry about the negative when it comes to amplitude because we know our amplitude is that distance above what's known as our midline and that distance below what's known as our midline. Okay, so next we'll look at horizontal stretches and compression. So horizontal stretches and compressions are going to affect our period. So determining the period of a trigonometric function. If our function takes a form of sine of b of x or cos of b of x, our period is going to be 2 pi over b. where our period of 10 b of x is pi over b. So we want to determine for periods of the following. We've got y equals cos 6x, y equals tan of 2 over 3x, and y equals sine of x over 7. So if we're getting our period of cos or sine, it takes the form of 2 pi over b. So in this case, we would have 2 pi over six, which reduces to pi over three. So our period would be pi over three. This next one, because it's 10, it takes the form of pi over B. So we would have pi over two over three. So our period would be three pi over two. Next one. Because it's sine, our period takes the form of 2 pi over b. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 over 7. So that's going to give us 14 pi for our period. Determining the phase shift, which is our horizontal translation for y equals tan of x minus c, y is equal to sine of x minus c, and y equals cos of x minus c, the graphs are shifted or translated c units horizontal. So determine the phase shift and sketch the graph of y equals cos of x minus pi over 6 from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll actually draw out a bit further than that, but that we only need the zero to two pi. Now, because we have a pi over six here, technically that's positive pi over six. So because that's positive pi over six, that's pi over six to the right. Now our graph of cosine normally starts with its maximum at zero. It's now gonna have that maximum at pi over six. Its minimum is usually at pi. So its new minimum will be pi plus pi over six. So that's going to be at seven pi over six. It's going to have its minimum.
And we know that that maximum's at one, the minimum's at negative one. We know it back to its maximum at two pi, so we'll have two pi plus pi over six. So I'll be at 13 pi over six. So we're still missing two key points. We're missing where it crosses the x-axis here and where it crosses here. Now, this is normally at pi over two. So we have pi over two plus pi over six. So that's going to give us four pi over six, which is two pi over three. And then this one would normally be at three pi over two. And we're adding pi over six. So that'd be nine pi over six plus pi over six, so that's 10 pi over six. So reducing that gives us five pi over three. So this graph looks something like this. Next, we'll look at vertical translations. For y equals tan of x plus d, y equals sine of x plus d, and y equals cos x plus d, the graphs are translated d units vertically and are said to have a midline at y equals d. So for example, graph y equals sine of x plus three. So there's our normal x-axis, we've got our y-axis. Now, when we have a change in amplitude, I tend to draw in those values. So at positive three, I'll just draw in a dashed line for our midterm line. Now, if this has an amplitude of one, so I'll actually draw a line in essentially one unit above and one unit below. This just helps me graph it. So this is at three, this is at four, this is at two. Now we don't have any other shifts. So sine starts on our midline. So we know it's going to start here. We know it's going to repeat itself every two pi. So we'll be back to there at that point. Halfway through, it's going to be on our midline again. Halfway between those, it's going to be at its maximum. Halfway between these two, it's going to be at its minimum. So this transformation has just shifted our graph upwards.